Hello everyone and welcome back. Today is a special lesson about the single most important concept in physics and that concept is acceleration. Now you may have noticed that I've actually been pretty careful about not using this word and there's a reason for that. There are words in physics that we use pretty commonly in our everyday language. There are words in physics that we don't use very often or at all. For example, we use the word speed in physics. We use the word speed in our everyday language pretty commonly, and the definitions have no difference. So when we use the word speed in physics, it is exactly what we mean when we're talking about it at the dinner table. There are some words in physics that you probably have never heard of. One of them, let's say, is rarefaction. A definition for this would be easily taught in the physics classroom because if you've never heard the word before, we are introducing the definition to you for the first time, and there are no previous definitions in your mind to butt against. However, sometimes there are words that exist both in physics and in every language, and what they mean are similar, but not totally the same. Acceleration is a perfect example of this, and the fact that it's a, such an important concept makes teaching it even more difficult and makes understanding it even more important. For example, if I asked the average person, what does it mean if a car is accelerating? They would probably say the speed of the car is increasing and they would be right. However, they would only be one third right. There'd be one third correct, which means on a physics exam, they would be two thirds wrong. And 33% on a physics exam is not very good. So I'm not exaggerating when I say this is probably the most important video in this entire series. So without further ado, let's talk about acceleration. Before we begin, let's hammer down some definitions that lead up to it. What is speed? Well, we've talked about this. Speed, a word used to describe how fast an object is moving, something you can have a fast or high speed or a slow or low speed. The words we use to describe physics definitions like speed or velocity are very important, and that's going to be even more so when we get to acceleration. So examples of speeds, 15 miles an hour, 20 feet per second, 45 meters per second, 70 kilometers per minute. These are all speeds. Okay, then what is velocity? Well, we've talked about this as well. Velocity, speed in a given direction. Examples of velocity, 15 miles per hour east, 20 feet per second to the right, 45 meters per second along the negative y axis, 70 kilometers per minute. 30 degrees below the positive x-axis. All of these are legitimate velocities depending on your reference frame. Okay, so what is acceleration? You ready? Here's the definition of acceleration, the single most important concept in physics. Acceleration, a change in velocity over a period of time. That's it. That's a definition of acceleration. It's pretty simple, right? Well, that's kind of the issue. It is deceptively simple. If you noticed, I underlined a certain point, change in velocity, because velocity is a previous definition. Velocity is speed with direction. Now, this is where the issue came up with the question I asked before. What does it mean if a car is accelerating? If a car is accelerating, it is changing velocity. That doesn't just mean it is getting faster. It means an object is accelerating if it is increasing the speed, decreasing in speed or changing direction. That car is accelerating if it is doing any of these or any combination of these. So any change of velocity means an object is accelerating. The language that is used in physics to describe whether an object is speeding up, slowing down or changing direction is done with a combination of kinematics and forces, which is what we're going to get into. All right, let's clarify this a little bit. An acceleration can be high or low. You can also say large or small, but never fast or slow. These words reference speed or velocity, not acceleration. So how you talk about this variable is actually very key. There's no such thing as a fast acceleration. You would have a large acceleration, which means the velocity is changing very quickly, but there's no such thing as a fast or slow acceleration. So if an object is a high acceleration, what does that mean? Well, that means the velocity is changing in a very short period of time. Let's say a bullet being fired from a gun goes from zero meters a second to a very large velocity in a very short period of time. A baseball hit by a bat is moving in one direction with a high velocity, then all of a sudden is moving in the opposite direction with a high velocity. So that's a very large change in velocity over a very small period of time. If a motorcycle is rounding a corner very quickly, 
then there is a very large change in velocity because there's a change in direction over a small period of time. What about a low acceleration? Well, a low acceleration means the velocity is changing over a longer period of time. So an example of this would be, say, a train coming into or leaving a station. A train could have a very high velocity, but when a train comes into a station, it will actually begin slowing down a few miles out because it takes a long time for that train to slow down. It also takes a long time for that train to speed up. So when a train leaves a train station, it doesn't just fly out of the station. It takes a long period of time for it to increase its velocity. Real quick, are the following objects accelerating? An apple falling from a tree. Well, an apple falling from a tree will increase its velocity, so the answer is yes. A motorcycle slowing down to a red light. Slowing down means velocity is decreasing, so the answer is yes. A car going 20 meters per second in a straight line. Well, if the speed is not changing and the direction is not changing, then this object is not accelerating. A car going 20 meters per second around a curve. The answer is yes, because the car's direction is changing. A baseball thrown from one person to another. Yes, there's actually a number of moments where the ball is accelerating in different directions. A dog walking at a constant velocity. Those last two words are magic words. Constant velocity, by its very definition, means there is a zero acceleration. There is no acceleration. The speed of the dog is not changing, nor is its direction. Okay, since velocity expressed as a change in position over time, the SI units for velocity are meters per second. In other words, if you have a velocity of 5 meters per second, your position is changing by 5 meters every second that passes. Therefore, if acceleration is expressed as a change in velocity over time, then the acceleration units would look something like this, where what is on top is what is changing. If you have an acceleration of 5 meters per second every second, that means you are either speeding up or slowing down by that much velocity every second that passes. Now, it is typically not written like this because writing it like this is a little wieldy. So if I take meters per second divided by seconds, seconds drops in underneath, and it is typically written like this. So what is on the left is the actual meaning of acceleration. What is on top is what is changing every second that passes. But for simplicity's sake for writing, it's usually written as meters per second squared, which is what is on the right. Let's do a few exercises to help get the idea across. I'm gonna put up a few questions. And what I recommend is that you pause the video Find the answer for yourself and then play the video again. We'll start with this one. So, if a person on a bicycle is moving at 3 meters per second and increases their speed to 11 meters per second with an acceleration of 2 meters per second every second, how much time does it take to do this? Well, if her initial velocity is 3 meters per second and she's increasing her velocity by 2 meters per second every second that passes, let's actually just go through it second by second. After one second, she would be moving five meters per second. After two seconds, she'd be going seven meters per second. After three seconds, she'd be going nine meters per second. And after four seconds, she would be going 11 meters per second, which means it would take her four seconds to go from three meters per second to 11 meters per second. What if she goes from negative seven meters per second to negative four meters per second with an acceleration of positive 1.5 meters per second every second. For starters, notice the velocity is negative, which means she was moving to the left. The initial velocity is negative 7 meters per second. Her final velocity is negative 4 meters per second, which means she is slowing down. Her velocity is decreasing. Now, if her initial velocity is negative 7 meters per second, with that acceleration, after one second, she would have a velocity of negative 5.5 meters per second. Then after two seconds, she would have a velocity of negative 4 meters per second. So it would take her two seconds to go from her initial velocity to her final. Let's go a little further. If someone in a car goes from 10 meters a second to 40 meters per second in five seconds, what is his acceleration? So if acceleration by definition is a change in velocity over a period of time, the change in velocity here is 10 meters per second to 40 meters per second, which is 30 meters per second, positive 30 meters per second over five seconds. So positive 30 meters per second over five seconds 
would give an acceleration of 6 meters per second every second, or 6 meters per second squared. What if it goes from 20 meters per second to 4 meters per second in 8 seconds? So change in velocity could also be found as final velocity minus initial velocity. Final velocity is 4 meters per second. Initial velocity is 20 meters per second. So 4 minus 20 will give me negative 16 meters per second. Divided by the 8 seconds will give me negative 2 meters per second squared. Superman is flying at 50 meters per second and decides to speed up with an acceleration of 20 meters per second squared for 4 seconds. How fast is he going now? Again, since acceleration is change in velocity over time, in this case, change in velocity per second, the velocity is changing by 20 meters per second for every second that passes. So let's actually just go through the seconds. His initial velocity is 50 meters per second, which means after one second, his velocity is 70 meters per second. After two seconds, his velocity is 90 meters per second. After three seconds, his velocity is 110 meters per second. And after four seconds, his velocity is 130 meters per second. So he is moving 130 meters per second after the four seconds pass. Let's do one more. The Batmobile slows from its initial speed of 10 meters per second using an acceleration of negative 5 meters per second every second. It does this in 6 seconds. What was its initial speed? So here, since we have the acceleration and the time, we can actually get the object's change in velocity. Acceleration, by definition, is a change in velocity over time which means if we take acceleration, which is negative five meters per second every second, multiply it by the six seconds, notice that bottom second cancels out. So if it's slowing down by five meters per second every second, it does this six times, which means the change in velocity is negative 30 meters per second. And if the velocity decreased by 30 meters per second and ended up at 10, that means the initial velocity was 40 meters per second. Okay, so let us bring everything together, and we're going to bring everything together by bringing back a velocity versus time graph from an earlier problem. In an earlier video, we had an object moving to the left at 8 meters per second. So the initial velocity here is negative 8 meters per second. The final velocity was negative 5 meters per second. So the object is moving to the left and slowing down. It does this in 4 seconds. The object was a crate on a skateboard, but what the object is at this point doesn't really matter. Now we've discussed graphs before, and I've mentioned that one of the most important things you can recognize with a graph is what the slope of the line means. And slope of the line by its most base definition is rise over run. So rise, which is the change in velocity, over run, which is the change in time, will give me this slope and what it means. Right here, if I do change in the y-axis, the units are meters per second. If I do divided by the change in the x-axis, the units are seconds. This is my unit for acceleration. So the slope of the line for a velocity versus time graph literally gives you the acceleration of the object. Now, while we're here, there's something I would like to show you. This is a motion diagram of the situation as well. Notice the slope of this line is positive. The object's velocity is to the left, negative eight meters per second. It is slowing down to negative five meters per second, which means it needs an acceleration in the opposite direction. In my motion diagram here, the velocity vectors agree with this negative direction. They are going to the left. They also agree with the fact that the velocity is decreasing. These vectors are getting smaller. That means the change in velocity is to the right. Now, in earlier videos, I literally had this as change in velocity. However, this secondary arrow here is actually acceleration, is the change in velocity every second that passes. In this case, you have velocity to the left. I have negative velocities here that agree with that. I have acceleration to the right. My slope here agrees with that because they're both in the positive direction, which means if I wanna find the acceleration here, and the symbol for acceleration is a lowercase a, I would need change in velocity over change in time. Change in velocity is found by velocity final minus velocity initial over time. This is the equation for acceleration. It is also our second kinematics equation.
if I was to do that literally here, velocity final is negative 5 meters per second minus the initial velocity, which is negative 8 meters per second over 4 seconds. I have a double negative here, which means on top I would have positive 3 meters per second divided by 4 seconds. It gives me 3 fourths or 0 0.75 meters per second squared. And this would be a positive acceleration, which again matches my slope and matches my acceleration arrow on my motion diagram. So there you have it. The single most important concept in physics, acceleration. Again, understanding it requires three levels. First level is just knowing the words. Acceleration by definition is a change in velocity over a period of time. Second level is knowing the individual meaning of those words. In other words, velocity by definition is speed and direction. So any change in speed and direction means you have an acceleration. The third level is actually putting the concept to practice. And we have already started talking about the fact that in order to change an object's velocity, you need an unbalanced force. You need a non-zero net force. So acceleration and Newton's laws have a very close intimate relationship, which is why we're going back and forth between them. And the biggest part of that connection is going to be our next lecture. All right, so while we're here, I'm also going to put up our first kinematics equation. So now we have two of them. Displacement is 1 half V up as Vf times time, where what I'm underlining right now is average velocity. And the second kinematics equation is the acceleration equation. Acceleration is change of velocity over time, or Vf minus Vi over delta T. Hopefully this video has helped you gain a better understanding of acceleration. Have a good day. This is Mr. M, signing off.